What's up, everyone? Welcome. Tony with Ola. Welcome everyone, it's Mia Fix, the son of Ola, 149. I don't have anything more to say. What's up, everyone, and welcome to Sun with Ola 139. How are you guys doing? It's me and Pix in the house today, and I uh, hope you guys are having a good Sunday so far. We have all the people in the premiere. What's up? Hope you're doing good. Good morning, good evening, good night. Good to have you here. I forgot my TV last time. People were going crazy about that. Oh shit, Ola, did you uh, not want to show how many subscribers you have? Yes, it's just that sometimes I forget, okay? No? Is that not okay? People are Ooh. There are absolutely no room for errors with you guys. Or not, not all of you guys, but a lot of guys out there. And as soon as you do something that's not out of the ordinary, they're like... Ugh. Ugh. You know? Is that you? Right there. That might be you. Okay? Calm the f*** down, okay? I forgot to turn on the TV. Is that okay? No? Oh, oh shit. Maybe you need to uh, start worrying about other things in life. How about that? That's all I complaining about you guys complaining. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? The news. Stop the presses. You know, the, the magazine press. There's a new headline in town. Kirk Hammett says that maybe the age of active pickups is over. <gasps> what? What is he saying? The Metallica guitarist says Puff aged better and he has been swayed away from active humbuckers for lead work and James Hetfield agrees. What? When hell froze us over or something like that. This is insane. This is, this is important news. Old Puffs are so much more touch sensitive and I've been trying to figure out for the last 10 years whether or not active pickups age well. It's about how the pickups age. Because it's a bunch of circuitry, but your traditional pickups with just coils and magnets and wire, they have a tendency to age. That aging factor really makes path pickups individual. Okay, okay. Let's read on. I put a pair of uh, DiMarzio pickups in a KH Series S style guitar. Maybe it was an LTD, says Hamid. And I was amazed at how good it sounded to my amp setup. I thought to myself, maybe the age of active pickups is over. You can push a path pickup. You can take an amp and just fully just gain it out. Correction, you're actually not pushing the pickup. The, the, you're pushing the pickup by picking harder, okay? Then you use the pickup to push the amplifier. So, you know, it's not the amplifier pushing the pickup, unless he's talking about feedbacking or what. The puff will just take it and take it, observes Hammond. You really can't do that with a high output active pickup. You turn up the gain and then you're lost and it's noisy. Okay, so basically he's saying that, you know, active pickups are were great, but passive pickups are just more dynamic. That, I, I guess that's what he's trying to, to explain here with uh, what he's saying. James is the same way. He has the same opinion. He loves path pickups and thinks path are great for lead, but for him, the EMD active pickups sound great for his rhythm sound, and he really, really likes that rhythm sound. So there you go. James for rhythm, EMD still the shit, okay? So 
Calm your tits. I guess now when people are making these how to sound like Metallica videos, they have to take into uh, consideration that Kirk Hammond might be playing more passive pickups now. Metallica is and was is still the EMG band, man. And everyone started using EMG, you know, when Metallica was using EMG 81s and all that. It's just a staple for the sound. I don't think it's about his age and he's becoming older and whatnot. It's just he's getting better taste, in my opinion. I prefer passive pickups way more than active pickups. But, you know, active pickups have their sound and style that suits really well for some players. So there you go. The band Architects announces the departure of guitarist Josh Milton. The ESP signature artist leaves the band after six years and three studio albums and turns his attention to his other metal group, Silosis. Josh joined the band after Tom passed away. How long was that? Like seven years ago or something like that? And Josh basically, you know, pushed Architects to wherever they're, they are at today. And uh, I mean, Josh is an incredible musician. And just go listen to Silosis and uh, you'll understand, okay, you'll understand. I like Architects, they're a good band. Silosis though, that's the shit. So, you know, Josh having more time for Silosis, that's perfectly fine with me because Silosis, amazing band. Dave Mustaine's Epiphone and Kramer signature models are finally here and it looks like they've been worth the wait. Okay, I've been waiting for the Kramer Dave Mustaine guitars. You know, I have the, the uh, Gibson V guitar that I bought, which is good. It sounds good at least. At least you guys thought so in my, uh, you know, 10 guitars video that I did. If you haven't seen that video, you can click here. Oh shit, Ola Engaging. Click here and... Uh, I have to think, is it there? I think, it, I think it's here. And you can watch it and, you know, what do you think? Did the Dave Mustaine guitar sound the best out of all those guitars? Ah, shit. Anyways, it's a good guitar, but I've been waiting for the Kramer ones because those are the more uh, vicious looking, in my opinion. Look at this. Uh, the Gibson, you have the classic V shape. That's cool and all, but I like this. I like the Kramers, man. Look at this. This is a V right there. And I hope the prices are going to be good as well. Okay, let's see. The Epiphone is uh, $30.99. And uh, the Kramers are $12.99. Okay, so fairly uh, well priced, I would say. Let me see. I, I want to see the Kramers. I mean, they, these are cool. I like these. I I'll probably have to snag some of these. Uh, or th that sound it sounds like I'm going to snag all of them, but I'm not going to. I'm probably just going to get a Kramer. The Kramers are perhaps the most anticipated of all Mustang models and not only mark the Megadeth's Maestro first ever signature Kramers, but also the most affordable Mustang signature electrics currently on offer. Weighing in at $12.99 each, the Kramer Dave Mustaine Vanguard is available in ebony, silver metallic and limited edition, rust and peace, alien tech green with each flashing identical spec sheets. Okay, and instead of the Gibsons, these have 25 and a half inch scale length. Okay, so a little bit longer in scale length. Uh, it's not the Gibson scale. They come loaded with seam rock and thrash factor humbuckers. Uh, look at this. It does have the Gibson uh, headstock though. You know, the hockey stick uh, headstock. All right, they only have the uh, the green and the, the black. Green, man. Add to cart. In stock and red. Dude, what? I wanna buy from Sweden if that's okay. Add to cart. Oh shit. Oh, let's just pick Deutschland. Alle cookies and accepteren. You know, I I'm 50.99. Okay, so it's a little bit more expensive. Oh shit, they don't even send to Sweden. What? Well, I guess I'm not getting a Kramer today, but I think they're pretty cool. I want to try the green one. You know, a couple of weeks back, Avenged Sevenfold were back on tour again, playing shows in like uh, forever or something. And now the live videos have started to surface. And with that, people have acknowledged that Sinister Gates has a new guitar and it's fucking headless. What? Look at this. That's an Avenger right there. So this has to be a Schecter guitar, man. Did Schecter ever make headless guitars? Or was this just a request from Sinister to Schecter? That looks fucking ridiculous, <laughs> in my opinion. Just saying. He's playing really awesome here, I, I must say. I don't know if that's thanks to the headless guitar, but, you know, I just don't know. It, uh... Wouldn't this have looked a lot cooler with a Kramer Dave Mustaine guitar? Like a really sick ass fucking Mel guitar? There's something... I don't want to bash on headless guitars because I'm not. But I, I'm just traditional, I guess. You know, for a rock and roll show, it's supposed to look like that. You know, it's supposed to be fucking all over the place. This looks a little... Uh, headless. <laughs> you know? 
But it's gold. That's cool. So I guess since it says Sin over there, that this might be an uh, upcoming Synergy guitar from Schecter, maybe. Not gonna lie. I have to try one. The Schecter team, or I would say like the uh, the Wild Audio team, has been busy making a uh, Wild from Hell guitar. Look at this Warhammer conversations with the War Year. Basically, Sack spec out a uh, Warhammer uh, with uh, a Dean from Hell graphic on it for his Pantera tribute thing, obviously. I'm guessing, since I see that it's made in South Korea, that this might be a model that they're gonna sell as a tribute to, uh, uh, to Dimebag. It has a Floyd Rose, man! Look at that! That's a 1500, I think. And also EMG pickups, because Sack Wild, you know? And uh, he's been sporting this live with Pantera. Look at this. Look at that! That's so cool. That looks so badass right there. Holy shit. He's gonna use the Wild Audio guitars, obviously, because it's his brand and all that. And this, uh, this is a pretty nice tribute, in my opinion, to, uh, to do this. And with that said, I'm gonna see uh, Pantera in a week. Holy shit. I'm really looking forward to it. Something I missed out on is that uh, they have now released a Black Tooth Licker. Or, I mean, it's coming soon. It's a stay tuned Black Tooth. Look at this. American Rye Whiskey. Uh, black tooth. So basically now you don't have to mix it yourself. You can buy a black tooth bottle. How do I buy one of these? Please, fair. I am 21. I promised. Uh, add to cart. Can I buy this to Sweden? Son with Ola has really become like, oh, Ola's shopping for shit. Uh, but not really. I didn't even, you know, I want to buy this. It's fucking 70 bucks, but you know, whatever. No delivery. Oh, there's no. Uh, okay. Yeah, they can ship it to Sweden. It's not going too well today, just saying. That's the news right there, but let's finish off. I want to listen to that uh, uh, sleep token fart again. You know, because it's so good. The news. Hey, that's no time. <laughs> yeah. Making Luis jealous. No. 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 <laughs> Playtime is over. It's time for an unboxing, baby. So sometimes I receive gifts from people. Thank you so much, you beautiful people. Let's see what's in it, okay? I have a slight suspicion of this and uh, what it might be, but as of right now I'm trying to clean my desk a little bit so it doesn't look too, too shitty. Uh, this is all the way from United Kingdom. Letter, stuff. Okay, let's read. Uh, how's your eyes, by the way? I'm nearsighted and I have been since I was like 11 or 10 years old. But I've started to notice now that even things, you know, afar is getting harder to see. And you know, switching between close and from afar, it takes a little bit longer to focus on now. So I don't need reading glasses, but maybe soon. Uh, dear Ola and Louise. On the intro of the recent Sunday with Ola, you mentioned Ola's tech tips. I could have sworn you said Ola's tech picks. Uh, however, it did still inspire me to create something which you will hopefully find enclosed. Please note that this is not a promo gift from a business. I'm not trying to get exposure at all. It is but a gift from a fan that happens to be able to exploit his tin side business to create things like this for some of my favorite guitars. I hope you like it. I've uh, included some guitar picks for your team too. Thank you so much, Richard Wilkins. Okay, what did he send? Look at this. So, there's four different things, and the one thing that caught my eyes is this. Look at this. Remember Ola's tech tips? Take a look. How cool is that? OTT. Copyright infringement, maybe? Be nice, Linus tech tips. Uh, Ola's tech tips, look at that. It's a box with... What? What is this? Holy shit, it's a USB stick. What? 
Check this out. This is so satisfying. Oh, holy shit. That's so cool. Thank you so much. Look at that. Holy shit. Okay, what is it? <gasps> what? There's some greenery in there. <laughs> That's a moss right there. How? Look at that. And some guitar picks. What type of... Okay, that, okay, I understand now. Dude, maybe I can give this to the guys at the office. They'll, they'll love these. Just saying. You can grab some tits every day now while playing guitar. Dude, that was amazing. That little box and thing. Okay. Uh. Oh, what? Oh, shit. It's a key ring. Take a look at that. That's really cool. A little key ring. I'll put that on my car keys, maybe. That's so cool. Thank you so much. And last but not least... Luis and Ola. Oh, holy shit. That piece of wood smells great, by the way. Mm, holy shit. Oh, and there it is. Dickpicks.co.uk. Well, you said that you didn't want any promotion. Well, there it is right there. Dickpicks.co.uk. How lovely of you sending a couple dick pics. Dude, how fucking cool is that? Thank you so much for those gifts, man. That's amazing. All right, I'm gonna give these guitar picks to Joel and Alan. Okay. Hey, Let's go out. Joel, I have a gift for you. You have a gift for me? I have a gift for you. What are you doing, by the way? I'm uh, making desk. You're desk making. Desk making. All right, hold out your hand. There you go. Oi, oi, oi. What is, oh. Oh, oh, dick pics and... Tit, tit pics. Tit pics. Very nice. Very nice. You're oh, welcome. Thanks. That's from a, uh, from a guy. Alan, I have a gift for you. A gift? Oh, God. What's this? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Look at That's that. incredible. That's absolutely incredible. Now you wow. can have, like, uh, instant boner material <laughs> in your pocket. Nice. Keep me distracted on stage. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Are you outing your your bag now? Oh yeah, the peng apu. The peng apu. Look at that. Yeah. Very common in Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> Richard, thank you so much for that. That was amazing. Thank you so much for that. Unboxing with Ola. Let's go. Oh shit! Where am I right now? You might ask. What is this room? Look at this. What's? What are those? Is, are those shit pipes in the ceiling there? No, but I'm actually at home and uh, for you people that have watched me uh, since the absolute beginning of my YouTube channel, you know, you know, as any other YouTuber, you start from home basically and then you work your yourself up. I recorded all my videos from home uh, in an extra bedroom that we had in, uh, uh, in our apartment or our condo. It actually took pretty long before I realized that we needed to get an, an, an office for all of this because, you know, we had like 4x12 stacked in my room. It, there was basically no room for anything. I had like a storage locker with all the gear in. So I decided eventually, how long was this? Maybe three years ago to get an office. And that was our first office and now there's a second office that uh, we moved to and uh, that's our current office. And uh, since we moved office, I made a promise to myself because one of the reasons why we got an office in the first place was that I had a really tough time of uh, separating work from private life. You know, even more so when you were at home, obviously, because it's really easy to go eat dinner and then after dinner, like, oh, you know, I'm just going to sit by my desk again and then you're suddenly in work mode again. I had so much problems separating that, so, uh, you know, I felt that for the uh, family's sake, I needed to get an office. And since we got an office, I basically removed all and everything that was guitar related from my home and moved it all into the office. So when I get to the office, that's all guitar and work and audio and all that. And when I get home, it's family time, it's relax time, okay? Now, that was three years ago, and uh, right now, I finally feel that maybe I can, again, get a little office, have an opportunity to be able to work from home. So, uh, I finally have my home office uh, set up and ready. It's this, basically. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. It looks cool. And I figured I would just walk it through a little bit, show you guys what I have. And obviously, you recognize this. So that's the streaming PC right there that I built. 
And then I have these two screens, obviously. So very good for streaming. I have like the separate screen here for Streamlabs and all that and Discord. And, and then I have a main screen where I can work on. And uh, then I have my MacBook right here that's connected to this so I can have it on the screen as well. And that goes in to the, the streaming PC so I can stream my Mac on my PC. And uh, it just makes it a lot simpler to show uh, when I'm writing music and stuff like that. And now it sounds like I'm streaming a lot, but I'm not. But uh, I wanted to stream a lot. We, we just have to see in the future. Look at this mouse pad that I got. Evangelion, baby, how cool is that? I have my Go XLR right here. Nothing's connected, by the way. I have the speakers. These are IK Multimedia speakers, and they're perfectly fine, actually. They're, they're not that bad. Uh, just to have something to listen to while I'm, you know, if I'm recording a solo or tracking or anything like that. And for tracking guitars, I have this uh, Apogee Symphony that I, uh, that I got recently and tried out. And the reason why I like Apogee is because I really like the instrument inputs of those. And that's basically been my, you know, my guitar signal for the past 12 years maybe if I'm not using a UAD interface but just connecting guitar straight into an Apogee interface and that's a really good DI right there so I like to keep the same type of preamp at home as I do in the office and uh, that's why I have it that over there underneath here is my dog her name is Pix She follows me everywhere I go, so you know she, she's tangled up in my guitar cable right there. And look at that, I do have a guitar at home now. And uh, yeah, this is one of my favorite guitars. It's the AB1.6G right there. You know, the it's a bolt on. This is definitely one of my favorite guitars right here. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's just a, it's been sitting here. And I've been getting more and more used to having a guitar at home. As I told you, I didn't have a guitar at home for a couple of years. And uh, the good thing now with the guitar at home is that I can be working out and then a melody can come into my head and I can immediately record it at home. I couldn't do that for the past three years. So uh, a couple of swallows ago, there was a melody solo line that I played. I made that up here when I was in the kitchen and I just ran in and recorded it and that ended up in the swallow. I mean, you have to take motivation and inspiration whenever it strikes basically i got a mess here as well as you know old england standard you got to keep a mess behind you i have a hollow knight poster right there i have a logitech webcam right there and i also have a key light up there it's pretty good for streaming i have the pod go microphone right here so i can <gasps> It's, it's not the big room, but I have a couch here. This is Pix's spot when she's uh, not super tired. We have just been out and, you know, I've been throwing a ball with her. So she likes to lay on the floor, which is a little bit more cool. And uh, yeah, she's calm right there. So I just wanted to show my sweet little home setup. How about that? I dig it, man. I like this room a lot. Also, sometimes it can be a little bit noisy with everyone that's working at the office now. Uh, we're six people. You know, even though it's a big office, it does get crowded at times. And, you know, I, I like a little bit peace and quiet. I can go back home and I can sit here for an hour or two. It's great. So there you go. That's my that's my little home setup for you right there. And uh, yeah, back to Ola. Question of the day where one of my beautiful members get to ask me a question and I get to answer it. This one is from Zach Maroncelli. Let's go. And he has a bass. Hey, Ola. I was wondering if you'd seen the videos where people are talking about selling off their tube amps. I also wanted to know whether or not you'd consider doing the same thing sometime in the future. Thank you. What the f***? <laughs> Thank you, uh, Zach, for that very, very special question. Uh, okay, so I think he's referring to uh, other YouTubers have uh, made a couple of videos where uh, they're basically saying that the tube amplifiers are out of style or some of them are even like selling all their tube amplifiers or many of them in favor of digital equipment and, you know, uh, plugins and quad chord excess and tone excess. Not gonna lie, being a guitar player today is freaking excellent with the amount of gear that we have. 
and you know the possibilities and the different possibilities for different setups and for different needs because you know back in the day it was like okay you were either in your bedroom playing guitar or you were out on stage or in a rehearsing room uh, and you know basically the gear you had worked in all places and uh, now you have computers people are sitting in front of office desks like this playing guitar and they're also sitting uh, in their couch there's so many different ways of playing guitar today you have these small f***ing <coughs> positive grid spark goes and shit you can play on the beach basically and you, there's just so many there's just so much gear today that's catered to everything and everyone and it's really a luxury I must say what these guys are saying is that you know amplifiers are definitely not needed anymore and uh, it's basically become a luxury for you know vintage snobs <laughs> basically that's 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 the idea I got from watching and uh, hearing some of this to some extent I do agree because digital equipment is becoming really really good and it's really awesome you know when I'm sitting right here I'm using plugins man because it's easy it's simple I always have the same sound I have my cable going to the audio interface it's just really simple you know so so why would I even keep tube amplifiers you know while I'm using this all the time since I started playing guitar during the 90s there's still something about hooking something into something really big and loud and that is you know the guitar amplifier sitting in front of speakers like this and playing or even sitting uh, you know in the Tonex video I just did uh, where I was sitting in front of a full response speaker that you can get it loud but it doesn't sound real with a guitar amplifier and a speaker it sounds real it sounds natural maybe that's just me and what I'm used to and I know a lot of the you know the newer generations that start playing guitar they're used to this sound so maybe they think that the amplifiers and the speakers suck ass there's also one other small thing that people forget a lot about when they demo the digital stuff and the you know the things that are digital is that there's always gonna be the response time of you know, your initial hit of a string you know for every component you add that's digital and shifts from analog to digital you're adding a slight slight bit of response time or like a, a latency basically it's not that noticeable it's not that noticeable but it becomes noticeable when you plug in straight into an amplifier and you get the response of an amplifier you know what I'll show you why I'm gonna keep all my amplifiers at least for now you know I'll show you okay all right so this is why amplifiers are still fucking relevant in my opinion <laughs> that initial response from you know plugging in your guitar straight into an amplifier I mean so far I'm not getting that with any digital equipment and I mean for some people it doesn't matter and you know I probably won't notice it as well as I'm sitting here playing uh, through my plugins and shit but as I plug into a real amplifier again it's like whoa holy shit holy shit that's so much fun you know I'm in a very uh, good place where you know my work is around guitars and amplifiers so I've been able to build up a big uh, arsenal of amplifiers and cabinets uh, so you know this is a luxury not everyone can afford an amplifier or a cabinet nowadays they're really expensive still that's why we're seeing brands making smaller amplifiers and smaller solutions basically trying to fit every need of everyone and that is awesome and that's cool going back to what I said earlier it's an incredible time to be alive if you're a guitar player where we can have everything like this but you know but at the same time it all starts here you know something has to be modeled after and it's this and you know they still can make my balls shake so thank you so much thanks holy shit look at that question of the day holy shit did I change my clothes for this one what what or did I forget to put in the last swola mysteries man all right guys that has to be it for Sunday with Ola today I hope you enjoyed the show thank you so much for watching also the raffle who won the raffle you know check the raffle in the chat if you're not watching this in the premiere 
you missed out. If you want to be a part of the t-shirt raffle, you have to watch the premiere of The Son of Wafola, okay? If you want to support what we're doing, oldanglandshop.com, get a CD or a t-shirt or something like that. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.